family, welcome. Do you know that Jesus is still alive and he's still moving? If you believe it, come on and praise him with me. Jesus, you are worth We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to. There was darkness when it started, so you started filling in. Replacing darkness with stars then. You being God, we ripe into dust. See, you, you are God. Without you, there's no us. Thus, here we are in a world filled with calamity because humanity and our insanity chose self over you, chose self over truth, chose self over fruit, chose self over crew, the vanity. Now we stand in need. 
Streets covered in blood. Children and mothers, they can't stand and weep, so they kneel and plead. Would you intervene? Do you still intercede? See, as it seems, the prayers are not enough. The prayers seem weak. We've life into dust, but what have you done lately? What's left but giving up? The best are leaving us. The rest are feeling stuck. And you stand silently? Enough. You ask of me? Well, I ask of thee. What took you so long to return to me? When the world hit rock bottom, I sent my only begotten, forgot him. And when his work was through, I created you to do and to be, not God's, but my hands and feet. In the world that's bleak and in desperate need, but you decided to do it without me. So no, I never left you abandoned. Yes, I was right there standing, but like Peter on the sea, all you had to do was call out to me. And at that moment, you would have noticed the world from my focus. Know this, my hope is that you don't remain broken. Know this, my hope is that you don't remain hopeless. But in my name, the church is. In my name, there's purpose. In my name, you're worth it. Save my name, let the world know it. Jesus, we call on your name, Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus. I want me to you, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Oh, pray your power, pray your healing. Jesus. Oh, when the storms may come. God, it's true that our world needs you, that we need you. And Lord, I pray for a grace that would give us the ability to see our desperate need for who you are. Every hour, we need you, God. Every minute, we need you, God. Every moment, we need you, God. And we thank you that you're not a God that built a need inside of us for you and walked away. You're a God that remains close and says, I built you to need me and I'm here right now for you. We thank you for this and we love you. And it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. And everyone said, amen. Hi, everybody. Once again, welcome to Willow Creek. However you're joining us, we're so glad that you're spending some time with us. You might be wondering why I'm holding such a large microphone and that's because I'm about to give you some very important announcements and I wanna make sure that you hear them all. First of all, if you're watching our services live right now, I'd like to invite you to join one of our Zoom gatherings immediately following the service. We have a number of small group leaders and facilitators who will be there to help you get connected. So immediately when the service ends, if you're watching live, you can go to willowcreek.tv slash connect and join one of those Zoom gatherings. Right now, we may be apart, but we are not alone. And perhaps you've seen one of the Willow Creek yard signs popping up in neighborhoods around you. We'd love to encourage you to pick up one and put in your yard just to be a reminder to those around you that they may be apart, but they are not alone, and we are in this together. You can come to the church at your convenience and pick them up at the D entrance. To find out more information, you can go to willowcreek.org slash next steps. There's a number of uh, gatherings that are still happening at our church, either online or in groups of 10 people or less. There are watch parties that are going on and there are small group gatherings. I just heard the story of two couples who are gathering together to uh, watch the service and they invited a third couple to join them and now they have just begun their own small group. As some of the restrictions in our area are beginning to change, uh, we're putting out up-to-date guidelines on how to help you do watch parties together and meet in your small groups. And so you can go to willowcreek.org slash next steps to find out how to get connected into a small group, or you can learn some of the most up-to-date guidelines for our church. We're grateful for all of the ministry that God has been doing in and through Willow Creek, and we're grateful for all of your generosity that has made it possible. And we wanna urge you to continue to support the ministry at Willow Creek. If you're watching on willowcreek.tv right now, there's an easy way for you to give. Uh, you can simply click the Give button at the top of your screen and you'll be directed to a giving platform, or you can go to the app, or you can text WCSB to 77977 to set up a one-time gift or a re recurring gift. And now without any further ado, I wanna hand it off to Megan Marshman, who's gonna continue our series, Get Out of Your Mind. How do you hear from God? It's a question I've been asked a lot in my life. 
In fact, I think it's one of the reasons I even spent a number of years working for a curriculum company because I wanted to create resources to not just equip the church to know truth about God. I wanted the church to learn how to engage with him, to learn how to hear from him. Did you know you can hear from God? We did this in the curriculum by emphasizing that each time we open up the Bible, by the way, if you have yours, turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, <laughs> that each time we open up the Bible, make sure you say, it's time to hear from God. We also did this practically by creating space at the end of the message. We removed the three points of application at the end because we wanted people to hear from God for themselves. Based on what God's speaking through his word, what's he saying to you to do in response? We wanted to facilitate relationship. We, we knew the Holy Spirit could teach, but we also knew we had to give him some space and time to teach. I remember when we first started doing this, even with little kids, I remember we gave the message, God is love. And then at the very end, instead of telling them how they should act because God is love, we just created space and we asked them this, how is the Holy Spirit leading you to respond? What's God saying to you? Little boy raised his hand, yes. He said this, I'm a hoarder, okay? <laughs> okay. Did you say hoarder? I didn't say, I didn't say, did you say? <laughs> we didn't know where he got the word. Go on, and he continued, well, you talk about God as love, and God loved us so much that he, he's so generous with his love. I think God's trying to tell me that I'm not very generous with my toys. God really does speak. Do you want to know how I know? Because he compelled a fourth grader to want to give away his toys. <laughs> the Holy Spirit does teach you can really hear from God. In fact, as we continue our series, Get Out of Your Mind, can I tell you my expectation? That you would get out of your mind to make room for his words to dwell there. And I pray that what he says would change you for the better. So it's time to hear from God now. First Kings chapter 19 says this. Now Ahab, who's the king of Israel, told Jezebel, his wife, everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Whoa. Let's see how Elijah responds. Mind you, Elijah that just, just called down fire from heaven just gets this hate word from Jezebel. Let's see how he responds. Verse three, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. Today's topic is this. I can't slow down. Verse three, Elijah was afraid and he ran for his life. And he was running on empty. But how did he get here? He was on one of the greatest winning streaks of all time, and he was exhausted. Just a few chapters earlier, he started being on the run because for three years, he himself went to the king of Israel and predicted a drought was going to happen. And then he was on the run. Why? Because if he predicts a drought over a land, an agrarian land, that's their livelihood. Everyone's angry. So God tells him that, you know, thanks for being obedient. Thanks for speaking the word to the king, but go ahead, run and hide because now he's going to be chased. People's livelihood was vanishing. God provided for him while he was on the run. He, I mean, miraculously, he fed him through ravens or through a widow whose son eventually dies and Elijah gets to be a part of the miraculous healing. Then he gets to be a part of the greatest showdown, Mount Carmel, him versus 850 false prophets. And he calls down fire from heaven and then runs 17 miles down a mountain. He even beats Ahab on his chariot. So yeah, he's exhausted from running. How about you? In February, my littlest boy, Jedediah, started walking. We even got his first steps on video. Hey. 
Now, he's running. His steps aren't exciting because running is dangerous, just like it was for Elijah and just like it is for us. Are you running? Is your mind always spinning, racing, constantly trying to serve, do so much for all these different people? I know life has slowed down for many of us, yeah, but how about our minds? We're in the midst of living as the most caffeinated energy drink generation, just pushing and driving. And truth is our human bodies weren't made for it. I mean, we just, we even have only had electricity for less than a hundred years. You know, electricity that now we can keep our lights on. We can stay up later. We don't sleep. It says here in verse three, Elijah ran for his life. And the truth is we're running too. Have you heard that phrase? If the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. As life is starting to pick back up, are you beginning to run again at your old pace? Are you running? How about, are you running to your phone? Would you say you're a little addicted to it? I know it sounds kind of harsh, addicted, but is it harsh or is it true? Here's the definition of addiction. It's a relentless pull to a substance or activity that becomes so compulsive it interrupts everyday life. With an average of 2,617 touches a day on our phone, averaging 2.5 hours. If you're less than, if you're younger than 35, it's more like five hours a day. We're running to our phones. We, just like Elijah, are running for our life. We find ourselves too distracted with our plans, or even doing good works to our, we're distracted by our phones or our comforts. I wonder if we're so fast paced or too tired or too distracted with our plans that we could be missing God's voice. That's the thing Elijah needed. He needed to hear God's nudges and his plans, but the truth was he was so in his head, he was so tired and he was so focused. I remember a season of my life where I was running from place to place, person to person, opportunity to opportunity, flight to flight, and I even got on one airplane flight and I had a lot of work to do. And so I took out my earbuds and put them in my ear to let everyone around me know, look how um, I'm planning on being very social. And so, you know, I took out my, my laptop and I started working. Here's the question I was typing for the pastor's conference I was headed toward. I was on my way to go speak to a group of pastors. And this is the question I was typing. Have you missed out on ministering to people in the midst of doing ministry? I'm like, "Mm, I like that. Okay. It's kind of like me asking you this. In the midst of living for God, have you forgotten at times to actually live for him or In the midst of loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, have you forgotten to love God with all your heart, soul, mind? So that's what I was getting at, right? So I'm typing, typing, typing. Suddenly the guy to my right asks me, he says, are you a Christian? And I thought to myself, bless his heart. He doesn't understand social cues. That's okay, that's okay. Uh, What was that? And he says, oh, are you a Christian? And I said this, true story. Sure am, praise the Lord. And I kept typing. He kept interrupting back and forth. It probably took me 10 minutes to read my own screen. Have you missed out on ministering to people in the midst of doing ministry? See, I was on my way to go do some ministry and I missed the person to my right. And I've been on my way to go do good things and I've missed the person in my home. I've been on my way to serving the people in my home and I've missed their eyes. You see, I'm grateful for each moment. God has slowed me down because for me, running leads me to an inability to focus on what and who matters most. And I find myself living distracted, filling my calendar with, without considering the cost and finding myself, to be honest, burned out and consistently. I'm so grateful for the moments. Like the moment the pastor walks up to me, And he says, right before I have kids, and he says this, hey, 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 before you have kids, every no is a yes and every yes is a no. 
I was confused. He said, you'll figure it out. And I have. Every yes I say in my calendar is likely a no to someone else that, or whatever else I could be doing with my time. Friends, are your yeses aligned with your values? Who fills your calendars first? Is it the people you value the most? Recently, God had been nudging me into a new lifestyle of slowing down. And I actually laughed when I, when I got the invitation in this series to teach on slowing down because God had already begun nudging me. So I get to share as someone who's gotten to experience the beauty of committing to things like Sabbath again, turning off the phone, giving my phone a bedtime and putting it in another room so it's not the first thing I look at when I wake up or even having the courage to turn off Netflix, to sit in silence. Embrace solitude, allow God into the places that my mind naturally wanders instead of allow it to be there and then just distract myself with something else. He's been shifting my lifestyle. Why lifestyle? John Mark Comer in his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, put it this way. Your life is the byproduct of your lifestyle. There's a saying in business literature, it goes like this. Every system is perfectly to designed to get the results it gets. Usually it's applied to widgets, but how about life as a whole? He writes, if the results you're getting are lousy, anxiety at a simmer, mild depression, high levels of stress, chronic emotional burnout, little to no sense of the presence of God, an inability to focus your mind on the things that make for life, then odds are very good that something about the system that is your life, is off kilter. The way you organize your morning or evening routine, your budget, relationship to your phone, how to manage resources of time, money, attention. No wonder they call it paying attention, it's costly. Something's out of whack. Would you agree? Does something need to change in fact? Could today, could this be the moment of awareness for you because you can slow down? Don't hear this message as condemnation. Hear it as an invitation from your loving Heavenly Father because when we become aware of where we're running for life, we can slow down. God will provide for our needs. I know this because it's precisely what God did with Elijah. Elijah prays to die. He was exhausted. You remember the message from last week from Albert. But God meets his needs and slows him down. Verse 5, then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat. The journey is too much for you. I'm sure the angel would have probably loved to have a conversation about faith, prayer, trust. But do you want to know what Elijah needed? He needed food and rest. He needed to be slowed down first. Why? Because when you're tired, you're tired. There's not a sermon, service, or program that can fix tiredness. Do you want to know what fixes tiredness? Sleep does. For some of you, the most spiritual thing you can do is sleep more. Do you want to know how? Good, I'll get specific. Turn off your phone and Netflix. You see, God can't do anything with Elijah until he eats and rests. And God may not do anything with you until you get what you need to. Some of you need more rest. Others need clinical help. What do you need? Sometimes it's not a spiritual issue, it's chemical. In fact, visit the website here on the screen to take a step to get help, find resources, or connect with someone. If you're feeling isolated and lonely, don't do it alone. Here's the invitation that you need. You don't have to do this alone. In fact, God modeled it for us. Do you know who was the first one to rest in the Bible? I heard he gave it away. God was, and it wasn't because he needed it, but he wanted to show us what to do after work. The creation narrative. Day seven, God rested. Rest came before the fall. It was not a result of it. Rest, therefore, is part of God's good, perfect creation. God wasn't tired, but he knew that you will be. And if he didn't show us how to do life, 
how to, we would just work seven days a week. And look where it's gotten us. God says, rest is good. Burnout is not a badge of honor, but a lack of discipline. God meets Elijah's needs and slows him down. Verse eight. So he got up and ate and drank a second time. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Other translations don't use the word traveled. It says this, journeyed, or even another one said this, walked. And I did the math, the walk, the journey from Beersheba to Horeb. Elijah had a new traveling pace. He wasn't running 17 miles down a hill. This time he was walking at a speed of 6.3 miles per day. And back then they would walk around 12 hours a day, which at that time was pretty normal, which comes out to half a mile per hour. One commentator said this, that's painfully slow. Yes, God slowed Elijah down slow. In Galatians 5, Paul uses the phrases walk by the Spirit and be led by the Spirit interchangeably. You see, the concept of slowing down or walking is really helpful for us because here it is. It's pretty simple. It's putting one foot in front of the other. It's a pace for a life that's in step with God's Spirit. And in the midst of this walking analogy in Galatians 5 is the fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because can you love well quickly? Can you have peace when you feel hurried, rushed, or distracted? Can you be kind when you're rushed? It's hard to have contact, eye contact. It's hard to look people and be present with them when you're running past them. You see, God provided for Elijah by slowing him down, and he's making the same invitation for you. Plus, there's good news about walking. If you stop walking in step with God's Spirit, maybe you've stopped walking at that pace. All you have to do is take a single step to get going again. What's the next single step God is asking of you? You. You personal. I see, because I don't want to prescribe God's nudges. For Elijah, God asks him a question, but he does it after he slows him down. It's only when Elijah slowed down that he could even hear from God or engage the relationship. Verse 9, a word of the Lord then came to him, and it said this, what are you doing here, Elijah? By the way, God already knew the answer. Whenever God asks questions, it's never to get information for himself. It's always to give us information or revelation about him or about ourselves. He initiates the conversation, the relationship. It's always an aspect of our life we need to address. Elijah was running on empty. God slowed him down in order to provide for his needs and to engage the relationship. The good news is we get to read 1 Kings chapter 19, knowing that God has also provided for everything we need by sending Jesus. Our need for salvation because our sin was exposed, but God gave us his son. Not only did Jesus provide for our every need with his death and his resurrection, he also set a new pace with his lifestyle. Can you even imagine Jesus running? (laughs) He was always interruptible, thoughtful, loving, just fully present. He didn't run at culture's pace or even please people's timetables, yet he provided for our every need. And he asked questions to get us to take the first step toward him. In response today, we're going to slow down and listen to Jesus' questions because there's nothing sweeter I could give you than for you to hear from God's words, from God's word for yourself. Let me remind you where I started. You can hear from God. First, slow down so God can provide for your needs. In fact, if you don't hear from him in the next two minutes, Don't pick up your phone quickly to see what you missed out on. 
I trust in this time, God is going to speak to you. Why? Because it's his word. Will you engage? Let's slow down together and listen. And if one stands out, write down the reference and let it be Jesus' invitation for the next conversation for your life. Jesus says this, Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Why are you anxious? Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? Why are you so afraid? Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Do you believe that I am able to do this? Why did you doubt? Who do you say I am? What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? What do you want me to do for you? Why are you testing me? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? What are you thinking in your heart? What good does it do for you to say, I am your Lord and master if what I teach you is not put into practice? Where is your faith? If even the smallest things are beyond your control, why are you anxious about the rest? For who is greater, the one seated at the table or the one who serves? Are you asleep? Why are you sleeping? What are you looking for? What do you want? Do you want to be well? Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? If I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Do you realize what I have done for you? Have I been with you for so long and still you do not know me? Do you love me? What is God saying to you? You. Where is he wanting to start the conversation with you? He wants to provide for your needs as you engage the relationship and slow down your lifestyle. What's your next step? Take it. Walking becomes more natural over time. Will you pray with me? Father, I pray that even just after this prayer, we wouldn't move on quickly, but we would wait with you. I pray today, I pray for each person listening that today they would focus on you, hear from you, and say yes in obedience to whatever you're asking of them. God, I thank you for being a God who speaks. Help us slow down, we pray. And all of God's children said, amen. Be blessed, Willow. Megan, thanks so much for your teaching today. If today's message helped you see that you could use some support for anxiety, depression, stress, or other mental challenges, we have a list of resources available to help you. We have pastors available to listen and pray and help you determine your best next step. You can view all these resources at willowcreek.org slash mental health. And also, if you'd like to get a list of all of the verses that Megan walked through at the end of the service, you can go to willowcreek.org slash next steps to see those verses again. 
As always, we will be online for our weekend services, and July 4th and 5th, Senior Pastor Dave Dummett will conclude the series, Get Out of Your Mind. And once again, if you're watching live, immediately after the service now, we're gonna do a post-service Zoom gathering that we would love for you to join us. You can go to willowcreek.tv slash connect to join us there. Thanks everybody, have a great week.